guys, um, this is Alexo ASMR, and today I am back with a new video. And before we get started, I would like to once again apologize for being away for a month or so. And uh, I'm just gonna tell you guys, I am horrible at staying committed to making videos. videos for like a month like consistently and then I stopped um well that's because a, lo a lot of things happened um I started a new job and I work five days a week and now school started uh for a week already and I haven't slept that's why I'm up again at 3 a.m in the morning to make this video for you guys so, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I will try my best to upload more frequently, but if you follow me on Snapchat, you will know that I'm either going out or in school or working. So, I apologize, but, uh, let's get started right away, actually. So, uh, today I want to talk about something very different than what I usually talk about. And that is, um, for people who's moving to another country that, um, speaks another language. And this idea came to me one day when I was walking to the train station, getting ready for school. And I thought that this would be a good idea to make a video talking about my experience as an immigrant to a different country. So, uh, I'm just gonna give you guys a little backstory. I was born in Hong Kong, uh, 1997, and I lived there until I was around seven years old. So, around, I would say, 2005. Um, and my mother's side of the family lives in the United States, and my father's side of the family lives in Hong Kong. So, We've, my parents decided that it would be the best in our interest to move here for education. And that's what we did. We moved um, to the United States in 2005, around in September, October-ish. And um, the whole reason is for me and my siblings to have a better education and a better shot in um, college and stuff because especially now the uh, universities in Hong Kong is very competitive um, and it is just really not as good as um, America so me and my family moved here in 2005 uh, I started third grade here when I was eight to say it was uh, quite difficult in the beginning because I wouldn't say I didn't have any English language background because we did learn English uh, throughout my years in school in Hong Kong, kindergarten to first grade and second grade. But you know, it's a whole different environment. It's difficult for me to get used to, but I uh, slowly was able to um, join the other kids uh, social, socially and it was great um, so that's just a little backstory uh, for me and here are just some um, advice for people who are moving to another country or have to learn another language or something like that so uh, when I first moved here I went to a white dominant school, so it was a lot of white people and uh, other uh, ethnic people. Uh, of it, uh, sorry, I'm not saying my words right, politically correct. Um, but we had Asian in this district, uh, but this school is mostly for non-Asian kids. So there's like five out of twenty kids are Asian. And I was one of them. 
efficiently, I would say. Like, a simple conversation like, Hola, como estas? It's like, oh, muy bien, gracias, y tú? Um, you know, it really did help. So, this leads back to number one, speak it often, you'll learn it faster and more pr proficiently. And, uh, that's uh, very helpful. So, watch a movie or listening to songs would also really help. Because, you know, you gotta let your brain get used to it. And when it's used to it, you would just say it like it's nothing. I'm not, I'm not saying my Spanish is good. I, I just think it sounds decent. Oh, not bad. Like, como estas? Hola. Like, you know, we joke around. We speak like that and joke around to make fun of um, people who doesn't speak Spanish uh, or know it. And they just say, hola. Like, you know, as a joke, but uh, not to be offensive or anything. So, uh, yeah, that's the second tip. Watch a movie or listening to songs or music that is of that language would definitely help in some ways. Um, you know, I'm not trying to put my sister on blast, but uh, my second sister, who um, didn't really force herself to speak English, she because um, the school she went to in middle school was predominantly Asian, so a lot of our classmates speaks. Chinese um, in class in school and you know that's her environment so she doesn't really have to speak English in her classes in turn school and like me so um, when she speak now you can hear a very different accent she still have that Asian accent in English when you speak but it's fine um, as long as you get your points across it doesn't really matter but she her speaking her speaking skill is not as proficient as me or my older sister. Uh, not try to put anybody on blast or make myself look better. But that is true. So speaking is very important. Um, force yourself no matter what. Uh, and that's like the only advice I have for um, people who's trying to learn another language or adapt to another society, you know. So I've been in America for 10 years. Uh, I live in Massachusetts. Um, that's pretty much it for that part. And you know, it's it was really difficult for me to um, get used to the environment and the new society, I would say. Because it, um, if you look at it, Hong Kong and um, Massachusetts, Boston is different so different in terms of people, languages, uh, and the environment. In Hong Kong, everything is so crowded. There's no trees, and I would say, like, there's one tree every mile, I guess, because you wouldn't find any. Everything is man-made. And, um, sorry, I'm trying to, my throat is really dried. So, it was hard for me and my sisters to get used to uh, America, but now that we lived here most of our lives, it's not that bad at first. Uh, first, like, three years, I always wanted to go back to Hong Kong and stay there because I am used to that environment. I'm more comfortable back there. But now, I actually like it here and I would rather stay here than go back. I mean, I would go back to visit and uh, go back for vacation time, but I wouldn't stay there because I have adapted um, to this society and environment and I would much prefer to stay here, especially that I can drive here. Like, I've been dreaming all my life when I was a kid to drive a car and I am able to do that here. Um, I mean, I'm able to do it in Hong Kong too, but they are much stricter the are really narrowed and getting a car there would be nearly impossible because I think it's like double um, the price
pricier for a vehicle. Like if you pay thirty thousand for a car here, it's probably like fifty or sixty thousand in Hong Kong, and that's in USD too. Because you know, I'm not converting it, but you know, it just be much more expensive to drive a car in Hong Kong than in here. Um, yeah, so. I'll see you guys next time.